Welcome back everybody to our Intermediate and Advanced Civil 3D training tutorial series. In the previous set of videos we had taken a look at gravity pipes with manholes, catch basins, and the pipes themselves. In this next set of videos we're going to be taking a look at the pressure pipes that are built within Civil 3D. Now where I live we rely heavily on metric and the metric catalogs are not built out super duper well so there's going to be quite a few parts missing and we're not going to take time to build those but what this is is this is going to be a general look into the pressure pipes and not a super deep dive i find they're still quite finicky and not very user friendly and it might just be easier to build your pipe networks with the gravity pipes instead of using the pressurized pipes. Similar to gravity pipes, however, we do have to set up a pipe catalog. We have to create pieces, we have to create sizes, and we have to build the parts within the program itself. Now we can't actually do this within Civil 3D. We have to use a secondary program on our computer, and that program is called the Content Catalog Editor. So if you just click on start and type in content catalog editor, it'll bring you to this white uh, program window here. And from there we can navigate and uh, select file open and navigate to where our pipe catalogs are saved. So if I go into my C drive and I select program data and we do Autodesk, Civil 3D 2025, ENU, pressure pipes catalog, and here we have Imperial and metric. I'm going to double click into metric and we have ductile iron, polyethylene, PVC and steel. So not a huge amount of parts. If we take a look at the Imperial, there's flanged, HTPE, mechanical, push on, PVC, steel. So a couple more, however, back to metric and I'm gonna open up the metric PVC. It'll load up into the content catalog editor and it'll give me a few options that I can expand. So we have couplings, we have some elbows, some fire hydrants, pipe sizes, reducers, T's, valves. There's no Y's, pumps, plugs, crosses, or caps within here. The first thing I'm going to do though is do a save as. I don't want to destroy the original catalog, but I want to create a new one. So I'm going to name this metric PVC COC. I'll click save and it'll load up and save that for me. Now I'm going to also be using the the uh, pipe catalog from the previous video and utilizing the actual pipe sizes that are sold. So looking back uh, about eight ten months ago, if not a little bit more, when I made those videos, we have the pipe sizes for PVC. Now I'm going to utilize this when I'm building my content catalog editor. Now I'm not going to build them all in there. I'm going to build the ones that I need and the ones really that are used where I'm from. 100 millimeter, 150, 200, 250, 300, 375 and possibly up to 450. However, in a typical subdivision design, you're probably not going to get anything over a 200 millimeter, maybe 250 millimeter at the most sized pipe. We're not designing trunk mains, just a general basic subdivision. So I'm gonna build essentially those four to five sizes inside of my content catalog editor. We have our inner diameters, our wall thicknesses, and our outer diameters to go along with it. So I can push this to the side so I can see both on the screen. Now I'm gonna click on pipes and pipe underscore spig. We see that we have a whole bunch of sizes here, starting with 12 millimeter, all the way up to 1000 millimeter. Now we don't need half inch, so I'm just gonna delete the ones I don't need. We don't need three quarters of an inch. And I don't need anything that's smaller than 100. Now, if we notice here, we don't actually have a 100 size. However, I'm gonna delete these ones here and I'm going to turn my 110 into a 100. However, I'm going to go ahead before I do that 
and delete the sizes that I don't need. I'm going to turn 160 into 150. We already have a 200. Get rid of my 225. I'll turn 315 into 300. And then I'll get rid of the rest of these. Now, obviously, if you are using bigger pipe sizes, don't delete the ones that you need. For this video set, we're only going to be doing the few sizes here. So when I click on the ones, the pieces, the size here, we have a, a display that pops up at the bottom. We have our nominal description. We have nominal diameter, thickness, cut lengths. And if I scroll over, diameter inside, diameter outside. So we're going to have to go ahead and fill these out up top, but we're also going to have to fill them out on the bottom. So I will, I will start off by changing this to pipe DN100 underscore spig. So the first one I'm going to do is 100. I'll scroll over a little bit, nominal diameter. I'm going to change the description to 100. My wall thickness is 3.06 millimeters. Cut length we'll come back to. Diameter inside is 100.94. Diameter outside is 107.06. Now cut length is a variable that can help Civil 3D bend the pipes and follow a surface automatically for you. It'll break it into certain specific lengths, whether it's two, three, four, five, six meters. Generally, the, the pipe length that is sold is what you would type in here. And what I'm gonna type in is six meters. So when we buy some pipe, it comes in a six meter length, and what this will do inside of Civil 3D when we run a specific command, it will segment that pipe into six meter chunks so we can deflect it to go above or under sanitary or storm. We can very easily move the segments around. Unlike gravity pipes where you'd have to draw a whole bunch of six meter pipes, we can draw one pipe and it would segment it into six meter lengths. I'm going to click on the 100 and I'm going to change things uh, information down at the bottom as well. So I'm changing it to 100. My wall thickness was 3.06 on both of these. Outer diameter 107.06. And essentially that's all I'm going to be changing for my pipe sizes. I'm going to go through, speed up the video, and finish the rest of the sizes here. Done. A quick double check of all the numbers just to make sure you haven't made a mistake. This is kind of backwards fixable, so if you do make a mistake, you can update it. However, switching pipe sizes and re adding in the sizes can be a little bit of a pain if you have to go back and complete that step. Now, also, other items under here that we should be changing if you have the actual sizes. Now, I don't have the catalog defined sizes for bends and T's and all those other fittings underground. So I'm just going to leave them as is. If I look at elbows and just a short bend 45 degrees, we can come in here and change some of these. So we can make the 110 to be 100. However, like I said, I don't have the actual sizes. So I'm just going to change that to 100 and change that to 150. We'll do a 200. We have a 250, a 300 and a 375. 
And like previous, I made a mistake there. Like previous, you can go ahead and delete the other ones. However, if you do need them, I don't recommend getting rid of anything that you do happen to need. Now, unfortunately with these is you have to go through and change quite a few of them. So we're, cha we're changing, currently changing the 45 degree bends. You would have to come under for uh, 60, 90, 22, whatever, um, whatever kinds of fittings that you are using, you would have to come in here and change them. So a fair amount of work to change your elbows. Couplings are fairly standard. We have norm normal sizes. There's not a whole large amount of them. Looking under, we already did elbows. Fire hydrants, there's only a couple in here. Uh, some of the ones in Canada we use, this should be about three meters underground height, not 1.8 meters. So different sizes would have to be made and built out. They don't ship standard through Civil 3D. If you have any reducers, again, the sizes are in here. Same with T's and same with different valves. Now I'm not gonna go through this video and change every single one of these sizes as it's a lot of rinse and repeat, same as the pipes. Like I said, you change the description, you can change the nominal diameter, and down below, nominal diameter, outer diameter, and all that same similar information. When you are done setting your, your content catalog editor up, obviously save, save what you have done so you can access it later on and access it from within Civil 3D.